Hey, welcome to Everyday Asphalt. Uh, my name is Jim Warren. I'm with TechSapa, and we're glad to have you guys here today. Um, the purpose of this program is we go a little bit deeper in the areas of materials, design, construction, and maintenance. All these programs are posted on our YouTube site. So uh, the, typically the day after the meet, the day after the program airs on the Friday, it'll be up and running. You can go to YouTube, type TechSapa or Texas Asphalt Pavement Association, and you'll see right on the front page there a uh, playlist and the playlist is everyday asphalt and all these programs go in that playlist we're also taking the program and we're converting it into audio only and so it's also available on spotify and also the apple podcast app so you can listen to it as you're going down the road i listen to a lot of audible and podcast stuff that just you know, don't listen to much radio anymore that's just the way it is um, so please do that. Please like, subscribe, and share so you're uh, notified when you do that and helps uh, get the word out on these programs. All right, let's get to work. Our guest today is Lacey Peters with TxDOT Atlanta District. Welcome, Lacey, to it's Everyday nice Asphalt. It's nice to be here. It's so nice to be here, Jim. Thank so, you for having me. So we had a meeting earlier today, and so she just she's uh, we've been kind of I've been wanting to get her. Uh, to go do this with me, and so she finally uh, acquiesced, and uh, we're going to go. We're going to go ride some pavements and look at uh, look at some look at some pavements uh, that are going to be built, that have been built, and some new stuff that's uh, even BMD a little bit. So we're going to do a little bit of that as well. So, um, <clears throat> you know, one of our goals this year is to look at uh, ride and try to do some ride improvement and try to make our make our pavements ride the best that they absolutely absolutely can so Lacey why, why is ride important to you well the easiest <clears throat> answer to that question Jim is it's important to me because it's important to the traveling public okay. in all honesty everybody wants to be comfortable when they're driving and the one way to be comfortable is to have a good ride there you go if it's not comfortable they feel on edge they don't feel as safe a little, we, little tense on the steering wheel. They're very tense on the steering wheel. They they are concerned about what's the next thing that's going to happen in the roadway um, instead of worrying about what's around them um, and adjusting for those type of conditions. So right up there with ride and, of course, in our district and all of them, I would assume, mm -hmm. is we want someone to be safe. Absolutely. And a good way to do that is to provide a good ride and with that, a less, hopefully a roadway that requires less maintenance. Mm -hmm. And there were, we're out there less and everybody's happy for longer. Cool, awesome, good deal, good deal. Good. Um, so you in the Atlanta, t let us know a little bit about what, what you are, you know, where you're from, what you do, what do you do, how long you've been doing it, all this. So just give us a little bit of introduction if people don't already know who you are. Oh, okay. Um, I'm originally from North Central Louisiana. Okay. I went to Louisiana Tech and graduated, praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just go, sorry. And um, I, I met my husband there, okay. and he and I moved uh, toward the Texarkana area, and I applied for a job at TxDOT um, that same year that we okay. were married, and I got on uh, as an engineer in training. Okay. And at that, yes, right. I, mm -hmm. yeah. and in the program, okay. as they call it. So you got in the program. I yep. got into the program. Yep. And so it, for uh, my engineer in training days, I was, of course, in the program rotation. Mm -hmm. And I, the you know rotating through the Atlanta district, I was in design. I went uh, to, uh, actually, I went from district design for review purposes and such. I, I moved to North Design is what we called it back then, okay. back in the day. Okay. Um, now it's just kind of consolidated. Okay. And then uh, I went to construction okay. and out of the Texarkana area office. Okay. Um, and so after that, I came back for traffic, design, and the lab. And I was. And that's how you got to Atlanta? Yes. Okay. Well, I started out in Atlanta. Stand design was there as well. Oh, okay. I'm, I went to Texarkana for my construction rotation and then right back down to back Atlanta uh, to finish out where I. Uh, I gained my PE license gotcha. uh, while I think I was in the traffic office at that okay. time, or I might have been back in design, and then they rotated me straight over to work with Miles uh, and the guys in the district lab, good, and good. that's where I have been happy ever since. And so how long have you been with TechStop? 16 years Six. this year. Is that, are you scared? <laughs> yes. I, Why? I, I thought I, could, I, I was wondering if I was wrong. <laughs> 
Well, it's close enough. <laughs> it's close enough. Close Let's around. not worry about we're it. Usually, usually department's rules are rounding or whatever we're, we're doing. So that's oh, yeah. kind of Let's cool. Let's hope they'll do that for my retirement. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> just don't, don't, don't forget your retirement. Age. So you've worked, obviously you've been through the rotation. Yes. Okay. But now in your current job, you're working, you're still working kind of cross culturally, a little, not culturally, but just cross um, uh, areas, right? So you're doing your materials, right? Yes. You're still involved in design. I'm the materials quality champion. Okay. Champion. Yeah, no. Get you some. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm about champion today. Um, <laughs> and and then you're you're still in the kind of the construction area. Yes, I work for the. I actually work in the for the construction office. Okay. So my, a lot. I won't say all, but many pavement engineers prob possibly or probably work for their maintenance, the right. director of maintenance. Right. Right. I work for the director of construction. Okay. I work for Kim Garner, um, happily so, and. I, with that, I gain exposure from the design phase to the construction phase because, of course, if my supervisor is calling me, asking me what happened, yeah. then I'm about to tear into it no matter what stage of life it is in. You know, not but, I say tear into it loosely. No, I get it. I get it. But I think that, you know, from our audience perspective, that's one thing that, you know, we've talked about in the engineer class we do and even in the inspector classes. It's important that you don't get yourself kind of cubbied hold in one particular area because there's so much stuff happens across. And if all you do is design and you don't know about materials, you don't know about construction, you're missing a, a big chunk of it. And I think from your position, that makes you much more well-rounded from that, from that area and then able to, to answer more questions and to be more productive and probably be a heck of a lot more effective. My hope is ho to be helpful. Okay. And everything that we'll I do, that. I try, well, I, for construction purposes, I usually get questions directly from the AE, mm -hmm. the area engineer, excuse okay. me, or, or the assistant area engineer. Sometimes the project managers uh, will will uh, come and ask me things sometimes, but most of the time it's the area engineer um, and the assistant area engineer. I also get questions, of course, uh, from maintenance sections. Uh, if they have a problem area, I will go in and check it out. Of course, a lot of times that'll be... Uh, Jason Dupree will have asked me to do that. He's our director of maintenance. He'll ask me to go and the so-and-so was having trouble. Can you go and look? Or gotcha. can you go and see? And okay. Also, uh, for the planning side of things and design, um, or rather for planning, I'm on the plan our planning committee. And so when we go to oh. look for roads for what are we going to do so in our really next are, four years. You are really almost full, full circle almost. I try. So I, I just try to help when every one of those places. Um, not very well. <laughs> no, <can you? laughs> not very much and not very well. <laughs> not often. Doesn't not matter. often enough. <laughs> <clears throat> Caffeine's my friend too. Oh, All right, yes. good deal. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to we're going to go. We've got three projects to look at. There's there's two projects right in front of us. We're just yes. north of Atlanta, um, and we're going to look at two projects on 59. Yes. Uh, one project that is getting ready to be worked on, and another project that has finished last year? Yes, it did. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we've got one more project to go look at that's, um, that was, what was on the, it's got a, a BMD project on it? Yes, okay. it does. And okay. it'll be right back up right here, back up here. Behind so us a little bit. We're going to do kind of a loop uh, today, and we're basically just going to go drive, and we're going to talk about what we see. Okay, perfect. You ready? I'll do my best. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Good deal. So everybody's got our seat belts on, and we are good Check. to go. Let me get this out of the way. And uh, turn up, get run over up here in Atlanta. All right. So how do you like this part of Texas? I love this part of Texas uh, because it's similar to home. Okay. So from for okay. I know north north central Louisiana is a little bit different, of course, mm -hmm. but it, it's still quite similar. Um, still the rolling hills part of everything and the trees and the trees uh, that yeah. some people don't care for. Yeah. But we well, and of course during pollen season, a lot of people might not <laughs> care for, sure. for them. That's but for sure. it's a beautiful part of Texas. I know Texas has many beautiful parts. It's part about it being as huge as it is. Okay. But we our our areas more the piney woods, I guess is what mm -hmm. we're called. Yep. So this is 59 South. 59 South, okay. And this is coming up, when is this gonna let? Oh, I don't know the answer So you're just still one. doing design? 
No, 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 no. They they finished. I just don't okay. know the the letting okay. date or if it already let. It All might right. Have so let's let let's it, look so. at this project now. You can see it, and we'll be switching back and forth. So what are you looking at when you see a project like this? What are things that we're we're what do we need to do for this project? We are what I look at. So let me stick with yeah, just myself. Absolutely. So first thing I do is a drive through. Mm -hmm. I'm out doing? here. What yep. are we looking at? Yep. How does it look? Is there cracking? And I don't know if the camera is clear enough or not, right. or, or if it is. You can see that there is some cracking. There's some cracking in the, there's in the some, wheel pad. There's some cracking. So now I know that I need to know how deep is that cracking. How so far? That's just from a surface standpoint. Before, is it going through just through the asphalt or is it going all the way to the base? Correct. Okay. Well, how far it. are we going? That's I'm looking for the depth. However, okay. the first place I would have started is with old plans to determine, well, what are we constructed out of here? For, that's what you really need Your to do first. Yep. Your as built. Right. So we would have done that before the ride, mm -hmm. but now we're on the ride. So I'm going to move on, on to those okay. things. So um, just to keep that in mind. So I, I also note that the... The surface on the roadway is different than the surface on the shoulder. Correct. So it's totally different, which means there was a treatment of some sort, which is obviously a seal coat, mm -hmm. just to be clear. Yep. Um, it was obviously done, and the shoulders were left behind in some places. Yeah. This had a turn lane, so obviously it also got seal coat, but we left the rest of that alone. So right. you're about to come up to a section where you see that it's not there. Okay. So we know we have different surface types. The other thing to check that's really important, it is not the case here. But the other thing to say is, is my shoulder lower than my roadway? Right. Because if you tell somebody to do a mill and inlay and you haven't cleared the fact that you wanted to leave the shoulder at this grade, you might have some issues. If you did, in fact, leave a shoulder behind. Sure. Now, sure. the other thing we'll note is that there shouldn't be any drainage issues throughout the section we're in at this moment. Now, they're going to clip back this, well, where there isn't a curb, they need to clip this back so it drains. Yes. Okay. High edges is something that is, is, is dealt with by yep. the maintenance section and regularly discussed. You'll notice here that they're cut a little bit away. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as drainage goes for compiling drainage or flip, filling up for the roadway you see we've got a good roadway with adequate ditches yeah i mean structurally this looks pretty good i mean look the water's draining don't really have a well we got a little bit of an issue there yes. um but that'll be fixed when they cut those edges back but overall it's a decent ride you know it's not and bad so it's not bad and uh, we've ob obviously got some crack sealing in here and so we've got some cracking that needs to be dealt with but uh, this is you know probably got a few years on it so it's maybe ready for to do something so <clears throat> so you're looking at uh, the, the 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 structural condition of the pavement now will you come out will you do like on a road like this will you do any uh, forensic work on this will you do any fwd or any coring on this as yes a, as a, it has actually been done okay so the FWD was used to determine yeah, the remaining life of the pavement. Okay. I was not worried about us going all the way down and rehabbing. I didn't need the modulus value of the subgrade, which okay. is what you would normally be trying for. I wanted to know the remaining life of the hot mix layer versus the projected traffic for the design life. To of figure the out what the, well, how much material you need to fill in. Just okay. to make sure I had plenty of material because in all honesty since we have made the comments we did about the ride and yeah. as you see there's probably shallow rutting but you've not seen any deep or anything uh, no. you know a, a, no. a large amount of rutting. Correct. So we feel like structurally we're okay. Okay. We just want to double check that okay. and also GPR was used in particular. Okay. Um, because of determining that that the thickness was indeed what it was all the way down the roadway. Do you like, the, G, do you like the GPR? I'm okay with the GPR. Okay. I will tell you that if there is uh, water in your ditches, the GPR may not have read your roadway correctly. Oh, so if you're holding okay. water somewhere, uh, you might want to think about it. Just, just a little GPR bit harder. in the dry season. <laughs> when you find one in a place that gets about 50 inches of rain a okay. year so you know well, there are other places that stay drier obviously i got you um but no so yes i i did the, we did the fwd we did the gpr and then i had uh my guys uh from the district lab come out um and we pavement cord it to see how deep those cracks are because so gpr went, does not went, tell you that so you went and you did all the forensics now you've we're verifying crack depth in the process. 
and okay. and depth of bituminous depth. material. So and you have to verify that for the GPR to know that you got it right. You don't have any anomalies that you okay. need to deal with. I have a couple little structural failures in here. Yes, that would be alligator cracking yep. that you can see. Yep. Um, there was a bit of it back behind us yep. as well. Yep. So those locations actually are a crack that are about the first layer deep. Okay. So about two and a half inches. Okay. So, uh, well, I guess it's a little bit deeper than the first layer, but still, uh, you understand my point. So, when you're looking at remova removal, mm -hmm. you would already be like, well, it's if you're at two and a anyway. half, we need to go to three. Okay. If it were at five inches, we would need to debate whether or not five inches is where you need. You probably need to go to five. Right. So and here, that could be a This is the repair. end of it right here. It is. Okay. All right. So, um, you could take all that data then, and then that's upon which what you figure out how, how thick you're going to go. Now, is it the same rehab section throughout the whole project, or do you have different areas that you're doing different things in? No, it's the same. Okay. That is a okay. consistent section. That is one of the caveats of being on a U.S. highway. You m most likely have, have all the a consistent stuff. section. Okay. On an FM road. Maybe on a, not. Um, most likely not. We're okay. going to go with most likely not. Okay. Uh, you could be lucky, or you just different than us, and, and maybe so. Maybe that's the case. Gotcha. Gotcha. Deal. All right, I'm going to spin around. Okay. Since we're out of that project limit. We're not going to talk about this one. So, all right, let me swing around here at the church, and we'll get back on the other direction. So, let me ask you a question. Okay. Now, this project is now the, the part we're going to drive on next is the northbound section. Yes. And that's already been done. Correct. Why didn't they do the whole thing in one project? Was that a, what is it, what's the, what's the it thought? Was a, uh, was, it was a funding, funding situation. Okay. We were right. able to do half okay. uh, plus the crossovers and <clears throat> okay. then come back and do the opposite half. And it also made for a very constructible project because we, we were able to go one direction and be done. So okay. everything was set up for the one direction. Locked out, done and down. And then the other set of plans was already being created at the same time. Oh, okay. To go southbound for the same direct, you know, for the same treatment. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, so they sense. are similar on both sides. That makes sense. So now we're turning around and we're going to go back northbound and we're going to hit the hit the hit the project limits, mm -hmm. and then you're going to tell me about what you did on this on that now what you did on the northbound side. Now is that going to mirror on the southbound yes. side? Okay, perfect, it is. perfect. So right. it was like you saw a before and after. <clears throat> okay, well this so. is cool. You don't normally get to see that. Yeah. Normally it's like, well, this is what we did, but now you could, you could actually see what it looked like. Was the traffic pretty similar north and southbound? In this section, yes, it but is, we okay. do have certain right. pieces of 59 that are not. We, and uh, and that, that, from a design perspective, that's something you do have to look at, is what's your directional traffic distribution uh, in the big thing. So we're coming up here, I think right over the crest here. We'll yeah. pick that up. <clears throat> And uh, it didn't get going. All right, so here's the joint. <clears throat> yeah, the one right. I told you about. Yep. So. so this was finished last year. Oop, a little bump. This was finished last year, so um, it is. Uh, it, it mirrors exactly what's on the opposite side. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we investigated <clears throat> it at the same time. We're just simply, uh, it will be lit separate. It was obviously lit separately. So we have constructed our plan over on this, this northbound side for what is for the southbound side as well. Gotcha. So it was uh, about uh, three and a half inches of removal. Okay. Uh, then for the entire width of the roadway, and then an inch and a half of uh, super paved D. Uh, 7622, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, to kind of uh, level things up a little bit. To put everything back to right. Okay. So I could provide a very good surface for the SMA that you're riding on right now. So we're getting a nice uniform, uh, uniform opportunity to have a really nice uniform pavement. Correct. Okay, which is important. Very now, I'm, important. what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a nice, really good texture, a really nice ride. Um, but you, you said there's something different about this between the main lanes and the shoulder. Why don't you explain that to me? Yes, I will. Okay, so SMA is best laid straight with no deviations. As little handwork as possible. And as well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely, yeah. Jim. So ramps, 
wide shoulders, things that you might have connections to, variable and most width. definitely yeah. crossovers with yeah. variable Over width. here on the left. Those yeah. are all super paved deep here. <clears throat> okay. The inside shoulder where you see that it is a, a, uh, a less wide shoulder, right. a four foot shoulder, that's SMA. That's integral so, to the main lane. Correct. Okay. It was pulled with the inside lane, basically. Okay. So this lane was its 12 foot lane, then the out the inside lane was pulled 12 with the 16. four, 16. Okay. Now that the outside shoulder is roughly 10, uh, 10 foot okay. um, and of course you see our, our milled in rumble strips there yep. really good um, but that is super paved D 7622 and of course it's surface 7622 so it's uh, not that I we changed out the PG grade or anything but the SMA is for the traveling public it is to keep the skid as long as we can mm -hmm. it is the Cadillac of mixes yep. or so they say <clears throat> so they say this is a US highway uh, with a lot quite a bit of traffic on it in our district yep. um and honestly it, it just it it made a really good product i think you can tell that from yeah, the mean, video it, it from, rides, from seeing it it rides like you know, do you remember the iri in this job like it's in the 30s yeah it feels like it <laughs> every bit of it every bit of it i mean it's pretty it's a nice it's a nice looking job and uh rides good looks good and i think when you're when we talked about that earlier is like you know, when you're, when you're having to do this and you're worried about your driving on, you're not really enjoying the ride or thinking about your destination. You're like, oh, my God, what's going to come up next? And that's not what we want to give the public. We want to give them a good experience. Correct. So. We do. And I think this roadway does that very well. Um, uh, the, the area office did a really good job. Uh, nice joint. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> and... Uh, <coughs> Excuse they me. were paying attention and and the producer was really on top of it of yep. course which was great i know you can see our mountain of wrap from it over yeah, there we'll be bit. using that don't yep. worry <laughs> <laughs> good deal good deal uh well good uh, this is a uh, very nice uh, again good texture everything looks good drainage looks good um seeing a couple little tack marks i'd kind of give them a couple couple notches off there uh if i was writing this program for an award but uh, I'm gonna give them I'm gonna give them a little bit extra bonus points for uh, for just having a really really nice ride in the whole thing. So um, I, really I would hope you guys would be happy with this project. I am happy with this All project. Right. I always just speak for myself on those type All of things. Right. Well, That's what I try to do. You know, if Lacey's happy, then everybody's happy. So. That's what we can uh. hope. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm mad, what we really want is if Lacey's mad, everybody else is mad. There, no, if Lacey's <laughs> mad, everybody else is hiding. <laughs> oh, I hope not. So, <laughs> good deal. Good deal. So, um, you know, let's talk about just communication with the contractor a little bit, and, and as, as we kind of go through this sort of stuff, is is as things come up, and, I, and you mentioned earlier that your whole gamut of people from design to materials and construction, they feel comfortable talking to you. What's the relationship you have, or what's the relationship you try to develop with the contracting community that you work with? Well, that, well, that's a good question. So the, the contractors directly, if there's a construction project going on, they directly contact the area office. Okay. Because you have Chain to Chain of keep, command. It, well, you, yes. Or, or, I'm not on any kind of escalation level. Okay. All right. Jim, so that's number So you're a resource one. person. I'm a resource. Okay. And I'm a resource for the area engineer and the assistant area engineer and, and uh, it takes dot in general. Gotcha. Now, when asked questions, if... <laughs> If you get me, I'll probably answer whatever you ask. <laughs> That's facts. Right. But uh, I'll, I'll get better at that, I guess. <laughs> but no, so, um, but as far as the producers go, mm -hmm. I approve all the hot mix designs in the district. Okay. So they come through my office. You met Josh and yep. Marty earlier yep. and, and Jason and yep. Ethan. Good but folks. Josh and, and Marty in particular, yep. um, they help me with the level two requirements. for, And of course, I'm level two as well for approving mix designs in the district um and so that comes from my this is office the project limit right here yes it okay. was and so, hopefully right, so we're going to pull up here and just pull off and talk a little bit and then we'll go and pick up that other project okay um so. but so uh the as far as materials go mm -hmm. uh i i usually i get to see all the materials because i require them to be brought in with the mixed design so i can see everything um we also uh, we perform IATs, so okay. uh, so I know exactly what's going on. 
gotcha. uh, a little bit of extra, just a snapshot kind of, you know, because it's just one thing, nothing mm-hmm. to panic over, but definitely something to maybe have conversations over. Right. As far as the quarries go, I directly communicate with the quarries. You met, like I said, you met Jason mm-hmm. and Ethan earlier. Yep. Jason and Ethan uh, do a lot of the base work in the lab. Okay. For me. Now, right. Jason and I do the rehab stuff. Most uh, we're we're working on how to bring somebody along with that. But as far as a, a, a quarry calling us to approve a base stockpile for use in a District 19, that is me. So your materials coming from where up in this area? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. We are we are unique in the fact that most of our materials comes from out of come from excuse me most of our material comes from out of state. Okay. We get rock out of Oklahoma and Arkansas. Okay. And we get our flex base at the moment. A lot of it comes from um, comes from Oklahoma, okay. but we also down south have uh, some limestone sources just that are close to the southern part of our district. Um, so, but those are in state, but by far uh, we're a little bit more out of state than we so are. So we're even. expanding Texas just a, a ton at a time by bringing Oklahoma <laughs> in. So our border is going to start sliding, sliding north and just or, pick up the quarries a couple. Oklahoma and Arkansas, uh, we we also pick up for the AQMP, which okay. everybody should know, the BRSQC yep. and the CRSQC. Yep. We sample those materials for. Okay. the state we we go up and get those uh, okay. for your con well i know that's concrete rock but rock in general for hot mix for the brsqc the rock, the bitumen- the rock doesn't know where it's no, going it doesn't so the bituminous rated quality source catalog right. uh so there's several quarries that we visit in particular to pick up that material um and sometimes we're lucky and and uh granite mountain will have sent to lufkin or what have you and but we usually get to drive up there and get okay. that material as well awesome Awesome. And that's for hot mix. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, you know, when we were looking at that project, at least the southbound side, that was one of the things I wanted to kind of kind of go back to. Is, and I think the northbound project that was completed was you went in and you did you, three and a half, is that right? Yes. And, and, and that really is to, to remove any surface issues. To get to the bottom of the cracking. Get to the bottom of the crack. The bottom of the cracking was around... Uh, um, was around three to okay. three and a quarter so you in went places, so we bit, went below it. To try to cap, get all that cracking out We want there. a solid place to start. If you're going to come back up, you need a solid place to start, Jim, and yeah. that solid place was about a half an inch deeper, okay. a quarter, quarter to a half inch deeper than uh, your cracking, just to, to know that you got all of it, because I can only check one or two, you know, I, well, it might right. have been, it's probably, it probably 12 cores yeah. at about six inch cores. And I, I was like, so the crack could, I'm judging based off of that. And of but, course, but you're trying, I think the, the, the sense is you're trying to get the, the vast majority of the problem out of there. Yes. You're not, you're not saying, well, we'll just, you know, hey, we're just going to take off a, an inch and a half and put an inch and a half back. Yes. We know we got cracks going through. That's, that's, if you don't get them out, they're going to come back. Correct. Anything you leave there will be there. It'll, you know, be sure your sins will find you out. <laughs> you know it. Well, that, not only that, if you, if you uncover a lot of cracking, this is the conversation I have. So not all roads are as nice as what we right. just rode on, obviously. Right. But if you uncover cracking or you've got cracking all the way to the top and you go and see how deep it is and you find out that it's the whole depth, I got a different game. Do you have a different situation that right. you might need to have some other conversation? You might even need to look into something more innovative. Right. But what you're going to do is you're going to know how how long it's going to take until everything shows back up. Okay. So you make an educated decision for what do we need to do right now. And then you have a way to know to say, we can't do this again. We need to do this. And okay. this is what's going to fix it. I don't know if you... You might not agree, but there are certain situations where you have an emergency. So, like I told you, maintenance asked me to come and look. Yeah. We had had some terrible winter weather. Anywhere you got crack, you have cracking, and then winter weather attacks it, and and then things can happen. Things, especially things bad. Nothing good happens. Nothing good happens, yeah. and and if right. you have some untreated iron ore base, which is you know I explained it earlier to you, it's. Uh, uh, local material mm-hmm. it was used locally it was actually in like local local like down a road anywhere around okay. here you know kind yep. of thing yep. um and it has a high minus 200 so anytime water att- attacks that bad things occur yep. and and so 
there's there's no one and I call it when I talk to everybody I and and when we're having our committee meetings or I'm having meetings with design mm -hmm. or really you know my DE uh, Rebecca sure. Kim and Jason Katie you know when we're talking about those things I have to take a moment and say we have to have reasonable expectations Re as long as we have reasonable expectations we can plan for whatever may need to occur if we find something as we go and and being around a while you, you kind of you can kind of judge well maybe you know I don't think this is going to happen but this could happen this can these contingency things that you can start to plan for right and if you happen so okay let's let's get an example you're yeah. you're you're okay. milling okay you're gonna mill three and a half <clears throat> and you're milling and all of a sudden you see an area it's just fractured correct okay. what do you do what, you, what do you do you pavement repair it okay. in my opinion any pro any project that is going to be let as a milling inlay should have some amount of pavement repair in it so you have the item in there it's an item in there just and, in and, case you need it oh well in case i need it but at the exact same time for instance, on this northbound side, there were a couple of locations that okay. were deeper cracking. Okay. And so that's the the GPR was used to see if it was also holding water, which it was not. Okay. But it had de it had deeper cracking on it. Well, if you have deeper cracking, if it holds together and you go across it, then you might be okay. Maybe. Maybe. But in all honesty, if they when they sweep across it to clean it for you to get a good tack. If there were loose stuff all over the place and the sweeper really kicked it up all of a sudden, you should have cut, you should have cut that out. Yeah. And you should have given me my pavement repair that was in that in that set of okay. plans. You know, I know but it slows that, down the situation, that, but you need it. Having that item in there. Yes. As a contingency mm -hmm. for if thing if bad stuff happens or stuff that's unanticipated. And unanticipated, but then some to a degree, you you know that there's a more there's than a possibility. Be, something's going to be there. Gonna something's going to be there. You need to fix. There's going to be something to fix. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, <clears throat> anything special with the tack or anything on this particular project? Or um, we tend to use trackless tack. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, that's uh, normally what we do. Well, that's what we do. We okay. did. We did check. You plan the, note that in. Yes, in, in, yeah, okay. it's in okay. general notes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And um, then uh, that's what we attempt to use. Uh, if I'll open it if there's issues or, or mm -hmm. whatever we can always discuss. Mm -hmm. um, I'm open to that kind of discussion. Okay. If, if there's, especially if there's supply issues, you know that we're in a, a very sensitive area right now. And sometimes I don't mean just with that. I just you know no. rock and everything. <clears throat> you've you've chosen a, a, a an F and somebody can't get the rock. You know, I mean, just whatever. We have to be open to conversations and and uh, might need to stick with what we chose. Yep. Maybe we don't have, you know, maybe yep. we don't. It's, it's just one of those things. But as far as uh, the design goes, having those uh, those type of conversations beforehand go a long way. If, if you have open communications, like our partners in quality meeting, mm -hmm. and out we have AGC meetings as well. These are times when it's expected that somebody's going to say something, you know, that you're not going to, you know, that you're actually going to come forward and, and if contractor or textile is going to share Sometimes they're not that. totally comfortable discussions. No. Well. But, but they're out there. <laughs> but, I mean, I'd, I'd rather have the discussion in a meeting room or, or and in a separate meeting than out on the grade at 2 o'clock in the morning. And, well, of, of course, yes. Yeah. And then even so, <clears throat> and that's what I try to, to say, like you asked earlier about the communication. Right. If they, if I'm called, I'm called. But the one thing you can know for sure is I'm going to have talked to their engineer before I may. But I'm never asked. I, I'm if asked for a decision, I'm the wrong person. But again, you're a resource. I'm the resource, it's but I'm the, not going to tell you that we're going to change such and such. Right. Well. But it'll go back to the chain a of command. On a con, on a construction project, right. yes, it would always do that. But I do. And that is that is questions. the that is the that's the process. Yes. That is the process. Okay. It is. Very good. And I good like deal. to be I like to be open to anybody going ahead and saying, Well, this general note doesn't make sense to me or this or that. Especially now since we're going through a change in the spec book. Yeah. Uh, and I, at our partners and quality meeting that was my first question. Do you have anything about a general note that you've seen or that's popped up or that was here or there, mm -hmm. used, used one time and, and we didn't, anything you got? Because in all honesty, it's been a decade. 
It has been. You know, it's yeah. been a decade. Well, you so. had the, you had the special spec for a few years, but I mean, it's yeah, it's it's every ten years. So speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> is what I'm telling you, Jim. Either you either you spoke up and you let me know because I was willing to listen anyway, and and I try to keep that where everybody feels comfortable enough to say, well, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. but I'm also comfortable enough with myself to know I don't have to agree with you. You know, that's what that's what that's, that's how you're supposed to do. That's absolutely fine, and and I think it. You know, the important thing is, yeah. You know, stuff comes up, new products, new techniques, new whatever that comes up, and, and eventually you get enough of that stuff compiled, you've got to make a change to the specification. But the job I had before here, they would change the spec every six months. Oh, well. And so that becomes, from a logistics standpoint, trying to build projects, because projects last a lot of times longer than six months. They could be a couple of your projects, and now you overlap all that, and you kind of go, and what spec are we doing? Yeah. You know, that becomes really difficult. And I think from a consistency standpoint, I think everybody benefits. The, the, the you know, tech stout and the contractor and the consultants doing the inspection, if they're doing that, everybody could yeah, it's the same spec. It's the same, today it's the same spec. On this job, on that job, on that job, it's the same, so we can just go about our business of doing that instead of going, oh wait, that's you know 59. I gotta let me look that one up. You know, yeah. it, it's totally different. So I think from that perspective, that's very helpful. And even from a contracting for the contracting business, most contractors work multi-district. Yes, of course. And so that can be a challenge, I think, in many aspects. Is is while well, working Atlanta district. You know, and I got to do one thing. I go down to Lufkin, and they want to do something else. Not saying one's right, one's wrong, one's different, one's better, or not or whatever. But from a con from a contractor's perspective, they ask us a lot of questions sometimes. It's mm -hmm. like, well, why can't we just do the same thing? Well, in a lot of places, the materials are not the same. Okay. So Texas is huge, it, Jim. Uh, to, to speak it, to that, I understand their point. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it clear. Communication makes a wonderful project. Yep. Clear, concise communication make a very good project. We all know that. So that's why we try to be upfront with everything we've got. Mm -hmm. And that's why the notes are there. That's why general notes are there. Um, you know going in we, yes. that this is what you guys want. This These is are the what expectations. We want. And then, of course, with our local producers, when we're, we're dealing with them, um, that makes it even a little bit easier because they know the expectations and they and as long as your expectations are clear everybody can feel like they did a successful job gotcha. you know and we want that we want everybody to feel like at the end of a project that we really got it done we did it and we did it the best we could have and we ended up with a phenomenal pro yeah. you know and that should product, be that product. should be a goal and that should be you mm -hmm. know i would think that's something day one or first meeting mm -hmm. That's right. We're going to knock this one out of the park. And, and I do normally, I guess I left that out earlier when you were asking about the communication. I'm invited to the pre-construction meetings. Um, as, uh, I'm invited to some of the pre-paid meetings. I don't necessarily make all of them, but I'm invited to those. I don't know I why. you got nothing else to do. I mean, <laughs> just hanging out, Jim. Just hanging out. <laughs> just hanging out. Just doing hanging nothing. out. But no, so I make Eating it to Oreos. those. <laughs> yes, that's, that's definite, actually. <laughs> At least you knew you were going to have a snack when you showed that's up. That's true. I did, I did not know that. I will know that from here on out. Most this, definitely. This is the Oreo lady. So yes, if there's been an do. Oreo made, she has tried it, um, yep. which is awesome. So three questions to go. Okay. Um, what's the hardest part of your job? At this exact second, the yeah. hardest part of my job is staying ahead of design. Oh, they okay. have a lot of they have a lot of work okay. to do, and I need to be slightly ahead of them so the pavement design can get all the investigation it needed to be a good decision in the long run. So I try my best to stay ahead of them okay. uh, a bit, um, and that is actually very hard to do at the moment. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, second question. Okay. What's quality to you? What does that mean to you? Quality to, quality to me means excellence. Okay. So we want projects that both meet the traveling public's expectations and TxDOT's specifications. Oh, okay. But we, like want, we actually want to take that one step further 
because quality meant I did better than both of those were asking. Oh, okay. I took it to the next step. It's a little higher level than... The we didn't just meet. You exceeded expectations. Exactly. Oh, okay. We were pre preferred, I would prefer us to do that. When I say that this is a really, this is a quality situation. We've got everybody rowing in the same direction. That's another term I like to say. I like My that. guys are tired of it. Yep. But no, we're right away when the, when the producers, the contractors, our design group, and the area office are all rowing in the same direction, we are unstoppable. We will have quality and excellence together. Good. I love it. I love it. That's, that, that's, a, that's a good way of looking at it. That's a, you're, you're not satisfied with status quo. No. Okay. All right. you're, you're pushing, always trying to push a little bit more. Got it. What's that term in uh, Louisiana? Lanya. 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 Yeah. Always a, yeah. little, a little more? A little bit extra. A little bit extra. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know if you need to conclude that. <laughs> that is, every, the whole state will be like, yeah, Lacey's a little bit extra. <laughs> I love it. All right, last question. Okay. I'm Normally ready. I say king for a day, but you're going to be the queen. To make you can, I'm still going to let you be king because we could have a female king. You're going to be queen, whatever. King for a day, queen for a day. Queen for a day. I'll take queen. You get to change anything. What is it? Okay. So if I focus in on pavement, okay. so yeah. that's I am the pavement engineer. Pavement material quality, whatever you want to come up sure. with. So. When I rehab a road, I would like to use the Stream Master in the work. Okay. So I know this is, so this is fine in the sky. Nobody's got to worry about me turning into the queen. Um, and so nobody's got to worry about it. But the Stream Master handles the cement or powder application so very well. And then the work can, uh, maintains your moisture content to uh, and exceeds the expectation level. <laughs> so, so you're basically going back. You you want to make sure you've got a good base. Yes. Okay. Oh yes. Okay. Every time. Okay. Um, if constructing a new pavement, you should start with the subgrade. Um, if you uncovered it and you didn't treat it, the person after you will regret it. Mm. There's a very good chance. Now there's okay. a chance it could last for five, you know, fifty years yeah. or whatever. Great job, way yeah. to go. But if you uncovered it, you uncovered it for a reason. So you might as well have dealt with might it. Well deal with it. So, and there's another th comment I normally talk about is like, if there was a water problem when you showed up and you were doing a two-inch mill and inlay, you're still going to have a water problem at the end of the day. So <laughs> either you, you're if you don't address it. Until you decide to fix it, right. a, a water problem there will be. Water, so, water is pavement way more of a challenge <laughs> than people give it credit for. Definitely. And, uh, and it's something that we've just, and I don't care what public pavement it is, it's, it's an issue that we've got to deal with in certain parts of the state, particularly with expansive soils. Oh, indeed. Um, it's, it, it is, I don't care what you put down, it's going to move it. We're definitely know. not all building on top of rock. No. <laughs> That's not. for sure. We're and not. then the, the other thing, because I couldn't decide on just one or two things. No. <laughs> uh, if I'm the queen for the day, I guess I get to keep going. <laughs> if Tell I you. want to. Hey, why not? But I also like the application of the final surface layer uh, with spray paper. I okay. worry so much. I say worry. That's too heavy of a word. So nobody think too much about that, okay? I concern myself with how, uh, uh, what structure we have. Okay. If, if you're in the middle of that structure and somebody decided that it was hot enough to just lay hot mix on top of it so they didn't tack it that day i will find that well i say i will i have found that so and you're, so you're concerned about the uniformity of the tack this the bituminous structure working as a structure instead of independently on itself so oh, the okay. one i always loved it in the 1b class that, that there used to be when uh they would come in person they would show the oh, oh shoot. shoot they would show the laminated wood yeah and you'd see that once it was glued together yeah. that it was different mm -hmm. you know that it held the load differently yeah. and that was all i needed to understand that. Okay. so when uh, one of the things is is that they totally uh if you don't have it all connected then you're going to have a really you know you're going to have some delamination yeah. and wherever you skip that step there's where it's going to be so if you notice that as the trucks are delivering mix 
that they're picking up all your tack coat. They just picked up your tack coat where it mattered. Right. You know, so right. I believe that's very helpful in the long run. Okay. I like it. So I like it. I'll, I'll go with those items, even though I think you cussed in the middle of them. No, I, no, I think I think we got. Did we get it? We got, okay, I think I'm we got sorry. it. We got the you can cut it out. The other one was the uniformity of the tack and making sure that we, we've got a good bond and we're not picking it up with the construction equipment. I get that. Good deal. Good yes. deal. Good deal. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I know You're we're welcome. still driving, but I uh, can't pull. There's no place to pull off, so we'll go wrap right here. Um, okay. Big thanks uh, to Lacey and Atlanta District for letting me come up here today and spend some time with them. Um, just to let you know that, again, these programs are recorded and they're going to be posted on our YouTube site. And also, audible versions are also going to be posted on our uh, on Spotify and on the Apple Podcast. So, uh, good deal. So, uh, we're going to wrap right there. Thank you again so much uh, for... Uh, attending today or participating today and uh, wish you guys the best uh, keep making great asphalt out there and, and ever forward everybody take care now goodbye